Welcome to the Ransom Dark Podcast. I'm Alan Arnold, and as you can hear from the music in the background, we've officially entered into the Christmas season. It's the first week of December, and we have something really special planned for the next four weeks. It's an Advent series that originally aired in 2014 with John Eldridge and Craig McConnell. It's so good to hear Craig's voice again, his laughter, his insights, and just the conversation between John and Craig on how to enter into and fully experience Advent. The first of the four-part series is titled The Disruptive Invitation. Now, here's John and Craig. Friends, welcome to the Ransom Heart Podcast. John Eldridge and Craig McConnell. I'm cracking up because did you know it was Advent? Oh, lights are up. Got the tree. No. None of that's <laughs> you true. You are full of it. I know your tree is not up. <laughs> uh, I've had a cup of eggnog already. Yeah? <laughs> no. Gosh. Particularly this year with Thanksgiving so late, it's just boom. Exactly. Here it is. And it's a little disruptive just in terms of the schedule. Isn't it? Just had turkey and the family and boom, here we are. It's Advent. Boom. Talk about disruption. I forget what market I was in grocery shopping the other day and they had the Christmas music going, you know, full blast. And it was so disruptive to me. It's like, wait, what? <sighs> like It felt like an intrusion mm -hmm. into my normal operations, mm -hmm. you know. Advent feels like an intrusion into normal life. It is. It is. I always feel ambivalent because, uh, you know, all the trappings of Christmas. I didn't do good budgeting for this year's Christmas again. And, you know, I love the family time. I love so much of what's a part of Christmas. And yet there's that feeling that none of this has anything to do with Christmas and so the disruption is more than just calendar. It's internal of wanting this Christmas as I have the last 40 to be something different. Mm -hmm. There is a disruptiveness even to the church kind of seizing upon an entire season to say you are now in the celebration of Advent, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. Christmas tide after it. And it is a disruption. It is an intrusion into our normal stories. I mean, you, you have the holidays and then you have the holy days. Mm. They really are two different things, you know, and I think mm. that's part of what you're describing. Like, how much of this, how much of what I'm about to repeat again this year really has anything to do with God, his kingdom, yes. the actual coming of Christ? And, yeah. and I think that's why God gave us Advent. Like, I think the church was brilliant to kind of seize upon this as we are going to intentionally celebrate and prepare our hearts to celebrate through these four Sundays of Advent, and it's going to be disruptive. You're busy, you're preoccupied, you're panicking, you know, you're <laughs> trying to get the holidays taken care of. We're going to intrude with holy days. And I think the purpose of that is one of the great gifts of Advent is simply this. It reminds you that you live in a larger story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, now shopping at Walmart doesn't remind me of that. Going through, oh, where'd all these catalogs come from? How do we get on these catalog lists? Going through all these catalogs and, you know, ah, did we remember your sister I forget, did you get her something last year? All of that. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. intruding into that, right? Yeah, so help me. So the white elephant party is holiday, not holy days. <laughs> well, because Alan is also with us in the studio, I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> That's actually his little pride and joy. But you do have all of it, right? You've got the decorations and the panic and the budgets yes. and the parties or the not the parties, the office stuff. you got all that going on. And in, into all of that, I think the church tried to insert Advent to say, we want to disrupt. And in disrupting, we want to call you into mm -hmm. a larger story. Mm -hmm. And as we were coming into this recording today, I was just thinking again about 
you know, we love movies. We love movie trailers. If uh, one of us or oftentimes my sons will find a great movie trailer, you know, the new trailer for the final Hobbit movie or whatever, you know, we'll start emailing that around to each other. And, mm. and those things go viral quick because we love we love a great story. We yeah. love being called up into great stories. And I think Advent's meant to be something like that. It's this calling up into, gang, like there's this other thing happening and it's the invasion of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And you have a part in that and it's epic and it's beautiful and let's remember that. Let's be intentional to be called up into and reminded of a larger story, which we ache for. We want that. And why, John, does it take disruption for us to be reminded of a larger story? I mean, here we are, followers of God and lovers of Christ, and Christmas comes along. And why is it we need to be disrupted? Okay, that's a great question. I think it's two things. There's something about the collective momentum of your culture, just mm. the pace of life and the mood and the push and the, you know, people's lives are so busy. So you, you have this unbelievably inoculating, numbing, distracting power of the world you live in, mm -hmm. right? But then – if we're honest, there's also something about human nature that we are constantly trying to find some relief, some answer to the longings and desires in our souls, and we'll take anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll use television, right? We will use Starbucks. We will use the new ice cream store that went in down the street. Like, you know, there's something about human nature that is not good at waiting, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. good at anticipating the coming of the kingdom, not good at remembering God and his story, yeah. right? Yeah. And the holidays just play right into that. The panic, the preoccupation, the grasping at joy. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Right? There's the river of your world that you live in and its pace. But then you also have something to human nature that needs disrupting. We need God to intrude mm -hmm. into our story. And man, if there was ever an intrusion, I don't even want to say Christmas is it because you're thinking of the Christmas celebrations. Yes. I want to say if there was ever an intrusion, the incarnation sure was it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I live too often kind of on a very uh, superficial level in a small story, not aware of kind of the rhythms of the kingdom. And I'm saying this to my shame. And for my heart to be captured, it takes disruption. It takes mm -hmm. something jarring to get my attention, and it's either words that someone says, a song I hear, or something I see or read, but it does feel like, for me, walking with God requires lots of disruption, kind of jarring him, mm -hmm. getting my attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my sons loved those Advent calendars when we were growing up. When the boys were young, we'd do the little open each window. With chocolates? No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That would be an example oh. of the human desire to find some immediate gratification. I'm back. Okay. Well, yeah. now it's beautiful. It's got to put a little chocolate in there to get people to do the advent calendar. Uh -huh. That's just such a perfect picture of it. But just the anticipation of opening up a uh -huh. new window every day and what's the picture in the window or was mm -hmm. there a little scripture verse or something like that and mm. is an invitation – into a larger story. Mm -hmm. Come and remember. Mm -hmm. Pause. Be disrupted. Come up out of your massive preoccupation and small story. Come up into – and I love those little calendars. They were so fun when the kids were young. You have those and it builds a sense of mm -hmm. anticipation and, you know, we don't do those. 
any other time of year. So there's a specialness to it and it helps to give it that aura of something really good is taking place here. We're celebrating something very special. I think that's what Advent was supposed to do for our hearts. Yeah. Would those be the words if you were a prophet or God that you would want this disruption to communicate, come up? Put into words, Mm -hmm. John, what is God saying in this disruption? What's the invitation? Mm -hmm. How would you phrase what God is calling us to? Mm -hmm. Francis Thompson has this great line where he says, and every now and anon, a trumpet blast sounds from the hid battlements of eternity. Mm. Like, the, mm. like, I think it's a combination of awake, mm. awake, awaken. And you mm-hmm. get a lot of that in the prophets. Awaken, my people. Awaken, yes. O daughter of Zion. Awaken, right? Like, come out of your slumber. Yes. Come out of your numbness. I think that's the first piece. And then I think a huge thing is remember. Mm. Remember, like, when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate our rescue. I think we forget that, mm-hmm. you know, because again, it's, you've got the holidays and you have the holy days. And, well, no, we're celebrating, you know, having the kids home. We're celebrating, you know, all that's good. All that can be great. But I think he's saying, awake, awake, remember, remember the story you live in. I accomplished your rescue Mm -hmm. this month. Mm -hmm. I accomplished the invasion of the kingdom. And I think it's awaken and remember Mm -hmm. and probably something like anticipate, right? Awake, remember, anticipate, anticipate my next move. Yeah, yeah, that larger story, John, that the world was just uh, under the cloak of darkness and that I was just alienated, having no relationship with God, and that he took the initiative. He disrupted the status quo. He intervened. He invaded not just the world, but my world, my life, and, as you put it, rescued me. Mm. Mm. Under a cloak of darkness and in deep bondage, Mm -hmm. right, the world was held prisoner to the evil one and God intervened in the presence of his son into our stories. He intervened into the story of the world and everything changed. Yeah. I mean, literally the calendar changed. Yeah. I was rereading the Christmas story that Elizabeth pondered the things that were said and done regarding her being with child. And Mary wondered and Mm -hmm. pondered. There's something about Christmas and the coming of Christ that if we see clearly one of the things we're saying, we're left to ponder and wonder, what are these things? What do they mean? Mm -hmm. What significance do they have? Right. Right. Exactly. And friends, (laughs) okay, first off, If Advent's kind of catching you off guard this year, (laughs) you're not alone. That's the combination of human nature and the world in which we live. It is disrupting. And there's two different kinds of disruption. There's the hassle, harassment, frantic, oh, my gosh, I've got to get the holidays done. What is it? Decorate the house, sign Christmas cards, you know. Then there's this other really wonderful disruption. It's as disrupting, frankly, as Jesus stepping into the scene, right, in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. It's the disruption of God using the Advent season to kind of awaken us out of our small story again. Whoops, got caught up in that. Okay, thank you. Waken, remember, remember that you live in a larger story. And all that God has done and is doing and will do, and then that piece of anticipation, almost like the boys when they were young, opening each little window in the Advent calendar, building anticipation. I think Advent builds anticipation, not just for the celebration of Christmas Day, but it builds anticipation for this God is still moving. 
this larger story is unfolding every day. And, and it just uh, calls me back up out of, you know, my busy, distracted life and the numbing effect of the world. And it calls me to remember. So we're going to do that for these four weeks together. We're going to use Advent as a welcome disruption to awaken us and to help us remember and to build a sense of anticipation. I think the invitation is journey with us in these podcasts, but also choose some observances, choose some things, whether it's the Advent wreath and lighting the candle and prayers, or it's the calendars, or find something that allows you to awaken, remember, anticipate this Advent season. Let it disrupt in redemptive ways. Yeah, and just invite Christ to disrupt. Come, Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. You've been listening to John Eldridge and Craig McConnell. Before we close, I just wanted to make you aware of the Ransomed Heart Christmas offers this year. You'll find them at ransomedheart.com, but almost a hundred of our resources, book, audio, video, are available for either $4 or $8. In most cases, that's way less than half price, and it's a way to give the gift of freedom this year. Also, you can gift for the first time ever a tribe membership to a family member to a friend, to a pastor, to a coworker. It's an annual membership. And when you pay for the annual membership, you'll be given a code. You can give that to whoever you like, and they'll have a year to experience all the resources of Ransomed Heart at no additional cost. So it's just a special way for us to say Merry Christmas. I hope you'll go to our website and check it out. I'm Alan Arnold, and we'll see you here next week on the Ransomed Heart Podcast.